I think people get tattooed because, you know, there's not a lot of real stuff left in the world. And it's all like a 24 hour news cycle. Nothing, nothing lasts. With tattooing, it's blood, it's pain, it's permanence. And when you get that needle in your skin for the first time, you have to be there. You can't just call it in. You have to sit there and take the pain and then sit there and heal it. And then you gotta live with the consequences of your, of your action. Hey guys, welcome to the show. A little bit of a different camera today as my uh, my other camera shit itself. So we're using the iPhone on a stand. We'll see how that goes. So I apologize for the sound if it's not as good as it usually is. Uh, it's been a big week for me. Uh, I missed out making videos the last couple of weeks because um, I had a bunch of starts. And then last weekend I had the Australian Tattoo Expo here in Sydney. And so that was pretty full on. Uh, I was fortunate enough to make some new friends and hang out with some people. Uh, and, and that brings me to today's topic is I want to talk about, um, tattoo motivation, right? Not just motivation as an artist, but also how is motivation as a client? You know, cause I, I'm, I've been both, right? And so <clears throat> keeping inspired as a tattooer, um, as you get older, as you get on into the years, you know, I've been tattooing 30 years now and talking to other 30 year tattooers. Um, you know, it's a, it's a common thing where you lose a little bit of the drive, the, the magic of tattooing isn't what it used to be. And so you need to find new ways to inspire yourself and keep your work fresh and keep interested, right? And to keep the passion going. Yeah, it's like you can be married to the most beautiful, sexy, loving woman in the world, but you need to work at the relationship to keep it good, right? To keep it positive, to keep it passionate. And tattooing is no different. I love tattooing. And uh, I don't want to stop tattooing, but you know you have to find ways to to keep the fire lit and keep the fire going. And one of the ways that I found was when I switched to Tabori. Right after 25 years of machine tattooing, I switched to Tabori, and that gave me a new lease on life. It gave me a whole new realm of things to sink my teeth into, and to um, to learn again, to become the student again. Right keep my neurons firing and my brain growing. But artistically, right, I feel like, you know, I went from fairly detailed uh, stencil work into freehand stuff. And um, at the on the weekend, I met up with Ami James from Miami Inc. And we hit it off. You know, we're about the same age. We're both in tattoo in the same amount of time. And um, we talked. We spent all weekend and all week after the convention talking about this stuff <coughs> nonstop, you know. And, and comparing notes on <clears throat> on this kind of thing, right? And you know, he used to do freehand, then he went back to stencil uh, after talking to some other dudes that we highly respect, some other artists that are fantastic in a whole other level. And so it's made me really think, right? That you know, in freehand, you know, I've talked a lot about doing freehand tattoos. You know, it's. Uh, you're limited as to how many times you can refine it on the skin. So you do your drawing on paper, you do your drawing on the skin, you refine it a few times on the skin, but then at some point you're just gonna be like, that's good enough, let's tattoo it. Cause you don't have all day, you can't go have lunch, come back and look at it again. And you know I mean? So it's limiting like that. And I found in my work, it got less detailed, which is okay, a little bit of less detail is fine. But I think for me now, after, after chatting with Ami, and after talking about the philosophy of this and, and stuff, I think I'm going to go back to a, a hybrid of freehand and stencil and see if that brings me to where I want to be, right? Because again, you know, there's no, there's no do-overs. Once you've committed that outline to the skin, that's the way it is, right? And you know, I'll do a drawing, spend a couple hours on a drawing, leave it on my drawing desk. And then I'll go look at it the next morning and be like, yeah, it's, uh, hands fucked on that dragon and I'll fix it up. And unfortunately with the freehand stuff, you don't get to do that, right? You, you outline it, that's it. So I'm excited to get back. The process I used to have was hybrid. So I'd, I'd stencil the main motifs and I'd freehand all the background. So I think I'm gonna go back to that <clears throat> with maybe a freehanding the stuff on the skin and then working from there and, and redrawing it. So we'll see how we go. But we were talking about motivation as well, the things that keep us motivated and the, the things that keep us passionate. 
And, you know, it's just finding that, I think it's the learning, right? It's the learning and the wanting to get better. And that's why I always tell people, you know, I'm just a student of tattooing and I'm practicing and I'll never not be a student. Uh, I think that's the only way to stay, to stay humble and to stay you know, hungry, right? Staying hungry is the important part. Waking up going, I can't wait to fucking get to work. I can't wait to tattoo this back piece. I can't wait to do this sleeve. I can't wait to do this background shading. So many people, I think, look at background shading in Japanese as a chore, as just the thing you gotta do to do Japanese so that you can do the color. See, I'm the opposite, right? I love doing the color, but I love doing the backgrounds. Nothing gives me better joy than making a fucking perfect, smooth, rich background, right? And by hand, 10 times as hard. So I'm really reinvigorating myself with some new processes and, and keeping motivated. Um, also artistically, I'm gonna try some new references out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start being a little more picky as to what I take on as well. I'm booked out right now for about a year, a year and, a ch year and change. And so I think I'm gonna start, be a little more discerning about what I take on. And I'm gonna be a little more discerning with my process and maybe slow it down a little bit and try to make every single fucking piece. Um, take the time it takes to make every single piece a masterpiece. Not that I don't do that now, but I think I'm gonna take it to another level. I think that's what it needs for me to stay motivated and to be able to really sink my teeth into stuff, right? And this is what I was getting from Ami as well. He's kind of on the same page. So it's gonna be good to watch. Um, I mean, his work is great now. And so I'm keen to watch how both of our works progress with this new, uh, this new idea. But it also brings me to motivation for clients, right? Because I mean, you know, I know a lot of people, um, they get their outline started, and they get their back piece started, their sleeve, you know, especially with Tabori, because Tabori is a bit slower, as I always talk about. If you're in a hurry and you want to save money, Tabori is not for you, right? Tabori, you have to want it. You have to want to come over and over and get it done by hand, right? It's a beautiful process and it's a, it's a beautiful craft, but it's not something that happens fast, right? And so I think motivation and even completing a bodysuit by machine, you know, you've got to deal with the pain, you've got to deal with the time that you're giving to this, going to the tattoo shop every couple of weeks for a full day, the days of healing. So I think keeping motivation to get tattooed sometimes can be a bit much, right? I get a lot of guys that come in, they get the back piece, they're keen, they get one sleeve and they, they fall off. They lose that motivation to complete the back piece, you know? I think keeping your eye on the ball and rereading the books that got you into it and re, uh, revisiting the imagery that first inspired you. You know, there's a lot of distractions in daily life. There's a lot of um, other things to take you away. I and mean, a lot of guys, you know, they start the bodysuit, then they get married or they have the girlfriend, they have the kid, and then the money is funneled to other directions. I mean, that, and that's totally fair, right? That's totally fair. I've got kids and I, there's frivolous things I used to spend money on that I don't anymore, but I don't think that, I don't think that the bodysuit is a frivolous thing. I think if you embark on this journey because you wanted to and you, you made that commitment, I think it's important to follow through, at least with the initial stuff. So if you start a back piece, you should finish your back piece because there's nothing more, you know, it's sad when I, when I think of the pieces I have out in the wild that um, everyone's got a, a fucking excuse why they're not finishing it, you know? I think it's important to finish it. You know, I finished my bodysuit. I got three kids, you know, a lot of expenses with the, with the business and the overhead and through COVID, you know, it's, um, it's important to finish what we started, All right? So, but that's my little talk of motivation today. If you're an artist, you know, mix it up, right? I was reading some stuff about brain elasticity and plasticity and how when we get ourselves in the same rut, you know, drawing the same things, looking at the same reference, at the same time of day, right? We create these routines and these patterns that create these grooves in our brains. So we just keep thinking the same way. It's like if you, when you're a little kid, you know, draw a house and a car and your mom and a dad on a piece of paper, it looks the same every fucking time, right? If you don't have any kids' drawings, right? It doesn't, it doesn't change, you know? There's, a, there's an archetype for what a house and a car and a mom looks like for each kid, because they're drawing the same thing. So we as artists that want to be creative and be fresh, 
We need to break it up, right? If you draw in the morning, try drawing at night. If you draw at night, try drawing middle of the afternoon, right? Don't look at your reference that you normally look at. Don't look at the imagery you normally look at. Try some new stuff, all right? Go on some website or pick up a book or, or draw something completely different. I'm gonna try experimenting with all sorts of things I don't normally draw. Just to fire up the brain and just try to get something a little bit different going on, some different perspectives, you know, and finding these ways to stay uh, motivated. I mean, last night, you know, I'm, I'm laying in bed and I'm flicking through Instagram, looking at the, and I never use the explore feature, right? I just look through my feed. I'm not a, a huge social media person, but I was just fucking around, tired, looking through the explore feature. There's so much work out there. So much people I've never heard of doing back pieces and body suits and, you know, nice looking Japanese stuff. There's so much out there. And it can be demoralizing when you're trying to achieve something and be a craftsman. There's so much out there, right? So to stay motivated, you know, through all that, you know, obviously it takes a perspective as well. You know I mean? So I just don't follow any of that shit and pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> and I just focus on myself. I focus on myself, I focus on my work and the people that I work with and my immediate friends and family. Because right, it can be overwhelming. Um, I remember reading an interview with a tattooer in America saying that he doesn't look at any other tattoos except for the stuff that he does. Because he doesn't, A, want to be influenced and have his work tainted by stuff that he's looking at. And B, he doesn't want to think about all the other people he's competing with. And when I say competing, I mean, you know, you're competing, you're, we're a service, right? We're, we're looking for clients. So we, you know, we have competition in that sense. Or not artistically, but just business, right? Like... I'm doing tattoos. He does the same style of tattoos as me. He does the same style of tattoos as me. You know, that's our artistic and business competition, right? <clears throat> so by blocking all that out and just focusing on yourself, instead of getting overwhelmed with the outside world and going, oh, you know, I'll never be good enough or there's so many other people doing it. Why should I try, right? Fuck all that shit off. Focus on yourself. I think it's really like what Ami was saying it's about what you'll settle for, right? There's that saying, you know, like, a poem is never finished, it is only abandoned. A drawing is the same, right? You're never gonna finish a drawing of a Japanese back piece and go, that's done. You're just gonna be, that's good enough, right? And so where your level of good enough is, is what we have to look at and what I need to raise the bar, and we all need to raise the bar on, right? So something to keep in mind if you're an artist, something to keep in mind if you're an aspiring artist, and if you're a client, you gotta look for that artist that has a high bar. Look for consistency, you know? Uh, the cliche metaphor is that, you know, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Even a shit tattooer does a nice tattoo now and then, you gotta look for that consistency. Hold your tattoo artist accountable because ultimately, if you get a shit tattoo, it's your fault. You chose the artist, right? No one forced you to go there. And if you saw a couple of photos and thought this guy's great, but you didn't realize there's 50 other bad photos, that's on you, right? So it's up to you to choose the right artist to get the good tattoo, find a motivated artist, someone who's passionate, someone who cares. You know, like I routinely have two, three consults with my big, my big work clients, right? Just go meet them, go have a chat, five minutes, it's free. See where their head's at and go from there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, and I'll be back, all right? Any questions, comments, whatever, hit me up in the DMs. If you send me a DM and your questions and stuff aren't really the kind of thing I'm looking for, I may or may not respond, right? I get a lot of DMs, right? So we'll see how we go. But hit me up in the comments, let me know what you think. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers.